Welcome to the Biz Bros Podcast. My name is Kyle Nelson, and I've got my wonderful co-host and good friend here, Eli Libby. Uh, we are the Biz Bros, and we have two really, really cool guys on our show today. They're going to talk a little bit about podcasting. They're co-founders like us, which we're really stoked to have yeah. some other co-founders on. Um, and they're just in the tech digital s- space, and they really focus on podcasting. They've got an awesome company called Squadcast. What's up, guys? Welcome to Biz Bros Podcast. Welcome, guys. What's up, fellas? Thanks for having us on. Yeah, appreciate so, it. So you guys have your own podcast, obviously, called Between Two Mics. You guys have your company called Squadcast. You guys are in the Bay Area right now. So tell us a little bit um, about yourselves individually. Mm-hmm. You guys can uh, pick straws and who wants to talk first. But uh, <laughs> let, let's kind of know like how you guys got into startup kind of life and how you guys got into the podcast life and, and, and how it all started together, how you guys kind of joined. Yeah. So first and foremost, we're longtime friends uh, before we considered doing any kind of startup or a podcast like rock actually got me into listening to podcasts because I think we both uh, we both love learning and podcasts are a great fast way to do that and go deep on a subject. Um, And then it really evolved from there to wanting to create a podcast uh, eventually as like a like a fun side project. Mm -hmm. Uh, The catch was we were a remote team um, and to have any sort of regular cadence we needed to record remotely and uh and we didn't want to sacrifice the quality of that content it's so so important to to podcasting and the the audience growth and that's really where we found this this challenge um and weren't happy with the state of the art after researching it talking to og podcasters and last four and a half years we've been of service to the professional podcasters who want to record remotely wow perfect niche you guys are in a great spot yeah yeah it's all blowing up right absolutely now. Yeah, cool. that's super cool um so how did you guys kind of come together and start a bit what i was just saying let's hear rocks oh yeah up. rock go for it yeah sorry. <laughs> sure and then i'll actually it'll lead into your your question but uh yeah so like zach said we've known each other for you know quite some time our relationship started off as friends so we've known each other since high school but after high school both went our separate routes in college and and uh, professional careers and whatnot. So he was a software engineer. I took the accounting finance route. I was working at an accounting firm as a auditor, which was a great experience for me as a young professional to get exposed to a bunch of business leaders and executives and founders and stuff like that. But uh, personally, I was just feeling like something was missing and I wanted to do something more creative, more independent and entrepreneurial. And so I started really preparing myself mentally and financially for that. And um, in the fall of 2016, Zach had called me and uh, it was a really rough day uh, from work. I was driving from a client uh, and, and, he, and it was a Friday and he called me and he's like, hey, I got this idea. Um, and so the whole drive home, we talked about it. And he basically pitched me the idea that has later become Squadcast. And it was like, it just felt so serendipitous because I had already been kind of going on this personal journey, not even knowing what I was preparing for. And it sounded like he was going through a similar phase uh, for himself, wanted something to do something different. So when it was about this intersection of podcasting and remote collaboration with the podcast, with the focus on quality and ease of use, it really just made a lot of sense to me because I had already been had the, uh, the privilege to work remotely, uh, not always, but it was something I was exposed to. And then, I, like he said, we're both really passionate, big fans of podcasting. And at the time, 20, even 2016, I still didn't understand why it wasn't more mainstream, why more folks weren't at least aware of podcasting, let alone listening and consuming it to the degree that him and I were. But I thought that podcasting is it's inevitable that it was going to become more mainstream and as the popularity grew more folks were going to be wanting to create podcasts and not everybody was going to have the opportunity or ability to record in the same studio or room or whatever so (laughs) this intersection of uh, remote collaboration with podcasting just seemed like it seemed like a no-brainer and and so we just did our homework to and research to see what was what were podcasters using were they happy it didn't seem like they were it was all over the place they were using skype yeah right uh, yeah zoom was still for relatively new anything that was like a direct um offering for podcasters seemed like there was a lot left to be desired and so yeah we just ran with it and um and, and finally you know the last couple of years in podcasting it's really blown up so it's been really exciting to see the space kind of meet our vision that we always right. saw wow that's awesome that is amazing thanks for sharing that yeah, story i always love stories when like people are in the right moment at the right yep. time the right intervention and then yeah just yeah, yeah i find it interesting too how you kind of remembered that exact day 
You remember? Oh man, I do. Because it sounds really similar. It's very similar to our story. When mm -hmm. Kyle brought in the idea to to Results Imager, which is our company now, mm -hmm. I remember I remember the yeah, booth were. we were sitting in. I remember the the restaurant. We were grabbing a beer. Yeah, I remember the <laughs> day. I mean, everything that happened. It was, it's it's interesting you you yeah. say that because that is very similar. God, that's cool. So with Squadcast, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about really like what the main um, value props are, why people mm -hmm. use it, and the service, but also how it's evolved over the past four years. Yeah. How did it start? And is it the same vision that you guys had or has it kind of changed and where is it kind of heading? And then we'll dive into the other topics. Yeah, I think the 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 original vision was really just, you know, um, this, this catalyzed by this challenge, this this problem that we faced ourselves. Um, and and then as we started to kind of think of it as a as a product after I had talked to Rock and uh, figured mm, maybe this is a business, maybe other people have similar challenge and desire to improve uh, kind of the state of the art and, and play a role in that. We kind of were naive and did, I think an exercise that a lot of first time founders probably do. And that's where you just kind of extrapolate in every direction possible and just, right. you know, uh, amplify this vision into all these crazy directions. So it really switched at that point to, you know, the center of it being focused on remote recording, but why wouldn't we also have podcast hosting and podcast editing and podcast advertising and listening, um, listening right? Exactly. Uh, so all the things in podcasting under this, uh, this like mega platform. Right. And, um, you know, that's an enticing vision. So we kind of designed that we, we, we uh, started with building the MVP uh, around remote recording, but had this like, grand vision um and that's what we were kind of operating under for a little while and we got some really good advice from one of my students when i was teaching at cal berkeley uh one of my students there was like you gotta go and validate this you gotta talk to people in podcasting like do you know any podcasters like i know you guys wanted to start a show and that's a really good place to start but like let's talk to some people who've been doing this longer than that and um that's what we did. We went and uh, we sponsored the podcast movement uh, as the largest conference in our industry wow. yeah, totally that year. Got super lucky that it was in California so we could drive there and uh, and kind of, you know, got a ho hotel on the cheap yeah. and all that stuff. Okay. And and uh, it was super nerve wracking. I was like writing code like the night before, during, after, like the whole time. And um, and we really put our necks out there and just kind of asked the question, like, is this even something you want or is this a problem you have? Or, you know, are you happy with what the way things are right now? And we just really start to validate the, the, the idea and the premise and um, got some really amazing advice um, from who uh, from Harry Duran, who's now our founding advisor because of the start of this relationship was so impactful on our journey. And he really said like, you know, just, uh, <laughs> you're, you're ambitious. So I, I, I respect that, but like really focus on being the best in the world at the remote recording bit. Nobody has solved that problem. Nobody is happy with that. Uh, we're all just kind of using what we have available. Um, but there's a lot of room for improvement there. And, uh, everybody else, all these other booths that you see around you are doing all that other stuff. Great already. Like listening is basically a solved problem. Like, ads are getting better with dynamic ad insertion and things like that. So like, let's focus on being the best in the world at, at the core problem that you started with. Um, and, and then we'll like partner and figure out what to do, uh, around all the other things later on down the road as things kind of develop. And, uh, that's what we did. So we literally threw away like 80% of the design work and planning that we had done at that point and said, yeah, you know, like listening to podcasts is, is pretty good. We'll give you that. Like we'll, we'll, we'll focus on, uh, on remote recording and that's what we've done ever since. And uh, I really appreciate that advice. So Harry, if you're listening, thank you. <laughs> Hopefully he is. That'd be cool. That's a yep. cool story. That's cool. Hey, you guys just kind of went for it. Just kind of took your best step forward and just yeah. sponsored the big podcast movie. Now you guys are the, the king. So yeah, the jack of all trades, exactly. you're, you're the king. That's yeah. awesome. We hope yeah. so. And, yeah. And I, I, I do feel kind of bad that we sent you zoom link now that we started talking about <laughs> I this thought the same thing I'm like these guys have a platform <laughs> yeah. for this. why are we doing this on zoom? zoom link yeah so Jeez. next time uh, episode two episode yeah, number two we'll, we'll definitely get it. market <laughs> research all good <laughs> absolutely um so what are what are the key things that other podcasters can get from squad squadcast what is it that yeah. would bring us onto your guys's platform 
Yeah. So th the main difference is that we focus on audio quality. The, the app was built specifically for podcasters, content creators, where Zoom, you know, it, it, it does what it does great, but it, it, it's a video chat app. It wasn't really made for recording the sound quality in the high, in highest sound quality possible, rather. Um, and so we really make it, I mean, but we take a lot of inspiration from Zoom. We have always had a video chat component because we really felt it was important for hosts and guests to see each other and just build that chemistry, which hopefully right. gets carried over to the listeners uh, at that final uh, po podcast episode that's published. Uh, but you know, quality is not as by default. We, like we, you don't have to change your settings or configure anything like you do in Zoom to get the highest sound quality possible. So how that gets realized is, again, it's locally recorded by default. So uh, you're not really dependent on the network to get the best sound quality or audio quality. And in addition to that, it's downloadable into separate files which we learned from our customers. This is not something that we necessarily, you know, intu intuitively knew, but they prefer ISO tracks or separate tracks so that they can edit them independently in the post-production process and then combine them. Um, so like if uh, a dog walked in on, on for right. Zach, Zach, he has a dog, I don't have a dog. So it'd be much easier to edit that out right. than competing with all four of our voices at one point. So, I mean, there's plenty of other things that we do uh, that really optimizes for the podcaster, but that's essentially it is that it's, it's purpose built. It's dedicated for podcasters and content, all content creators now. Or you sold us. We, uh, yeah. It, seriously. We we're going to jump the value, on, of, the value of it. It's, we'll hook you up. We'd love to help you out. Be awesome. Yeah, so um, I'm sure you guys talk to obviously tons of other podcasters. You're getting yep. feedback all the time. And I'm sure you guys are working with podcasters at every level of exposure. Someone mm -hmm. that's just getting started to, I mean, someone like Harry, who's got a massive podcast. Uh, what, what have you seen that's been common for most people that kind of was their tipping point for actual exposure rather than just running in, in, in place? What is it that actually propelled them forward that you guys have seen that's kind of common that maybe a lot of people are missing and it just takes, is it, you know, a lot of people say it's just consistency. Maybe it's yeah. just being louder. Like what is that you guys see or maybe a tip for our listeners um, just to kind of focus on? Well, I think you nailed it. Consistency seems to be the thing that gets rewarded the most in podcasting. And it's not always the most exciting answer for folks because, right. you know, they want that silver bullet. But time and time again, from some of the most popular podcasters or at least the most, um, you know, the most successful podcasters, it's they've dedicated about two to three years of just consistently delivering content, not being afraid to try new things, figuring out who their audience is along the way, um, not getting too wrapped up in the, the technical aspects and just putting out great quality content on a, in a consist, consistent fashion. But we've seen folks where it happens around the two to three year mark where the magic starts to happen and mm -hmm. a lot of the success starts to, to become realized for their podcasters. Folks like uh, Jen Briney of the Congressional Dish podcast, she has an excellent story where um, I can't remember if she got laid off or, or uh, something where she just said, I'm going to dedicate myself for two years. And if I don't get paid after two years, I'm going to go look for a regular job. And I think it was like on towards the end of those two years when she got her first like $5 payment or something and was like, <laughs> okay, this is a sign. I got to keep going. Yeah. Uh, the sleep with me podcast hosted by Drew Ackerman, who goes by the, the alias scooter, very similar story, gave himself a couple years to figure out what he wanted to do, uh, where his, where he's going to take his podcast. And again, it just, it happened over time. And now he's got one of the most popular podcasts out there. It's a podcast that's designed to make people go to sleep. So <laughs> very unique and interesting style, but a story we love to celebrate one. Cause he's a great uh, person, but just also, it just shows that, you know, if you dedicate yourself uh, to this, there, there are rewards to be had. It just, maybe it's not going to just happen overnight. I mean, even Joe Rogan, it took him quite some time to build it up. And now it's just like this behemoth, but it's like a, like a startup in a lot of ways where yeah. overnight success is not, not as uh, overnight as folks may think. Right. I a hundred percent. It's a great way to put it. We've Life's, been uh, for a couple of years and yeah. we're still, it's just like an ongoing grind with it. And if Respect. you, like you said, I think like you said, you know, if you can really just focus it as a startup, mm -hmm. it's like a side, high side hustle startup and just, you know, put all your energy into it. It's totally, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's like compound interest, right? O over time, these things uh, build up and compound on one another. And uh, to your point about like a startup, I, I, another thing I'll add is like listening to your listeners. I think like our story of, 
you know, testing our assumptions and going out and validating it against real people. Uh, I think, I think podcasters can do the same thing. So <laughs> like we think of our listeners as listening to us, but like, we need to listen to them you tell me, what would you like that would be more engaging? And, uh, you repeat that over and over and over again, and, uh, you'll end up in a pretty magical place. It's really cool. Awesome. I, I really like, I think the thing we like about podcasting the most is that the longevity of the content, it's not like an Instagram story where you put it up, it's gone. Uh, it, it lives forever. It's like you come out with good quality content from the foundation. And I think what you guys say about the quality and the audio and everything, I think that's a, uh, I mean, you can argue that you don't need great stuff to start, but I, I do think because the content lives so long when people go and backdate it, if it's good quality the whole way, I, I, I think yeah, that's you never know something. when the algorithm's going to pick it up or someone's yeah. going to see it and publish it. Yep. And that, that, that's why we love podcasting and YouTube. You just never know when that, that moment's going to happen. That's just like, yeah. whoa, out of nowhere. Why mm -hmm. did that conversation get picked up? So exactly. So what, what role do you guys play in the, in the business today? What do you guys do? Yeah. So I am the, uh, I'm the CEO and CTO. Um, we wear a lot of hats. I'm also a founding investor because we are a bootstrap startup. Um, I'm also a customer of Squadcast. Like we, we dog food and use it to record all of our content. Um, and there's probably some other roles that I'm forgetting, but I, uh, I've, I've built most of the technology uh, personally that we, we use today. I'm so grateful we have uh, Gene, the, our lead engineer, and our growing our engineering team. Um, but I'm also proud of, of that having that impact. And, um, and then, yeah, the, the CEO, just making sure everybody's you know, happy and healthy and able to grow together, uh, moving in the same direction, uh, pointed at you know, a unified vision. Um, rock, uh, I'll let, I'll let you answer for yourself. I know it's, it's similar though. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, our experience and skill sets are, are very different, which I think is really awesome about Zach and I's, uh, working relationship together. So with my background in finance and accounting, um, you know, it was a no brainer for me to take on the CFO role and, and handle a lot of the business aspects, but because in the early days, Zach was so focused on getting the tech together, I pretty much just tried to take care of almost anything that wasn't tech related because, you know, so much of his time needed to be dedicated to that stuff. Not that he wasn't capable of it or that I was better than him, but that it was just trying to help him keep his time focused on the most important thing, which was building out the product. Uh, but today, thankfully, like he mentioned, we're growing our team. Now we have about nine, nine of us ourselves included a uh, few other people that aren't full-time. And then we're that's a big focus for this year is really growing the team. That's our, that's our product this year is, is, is the team who help us will, will help us build the product. Um, so today, uh, you know, still wearing a lot of hats, like you mentioned, I still am the CFO. So a lot of the financial business things are, are under my, um, my focus also handle a lot of the HR stuff, the legal stuff. It, it's uh, it, and that's what I love about being a founder is there's like, there's Sales. no one. Yeah. Yeah. That too. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> business. Right. But I love being a founder because I respond really well to pressure and there's no one else to like look up to and see like, oh, are you going to take care of this? Or that's your responsibility. So right. like, I just love, because it helps me like the pressure helps me focus. And like, we have people depending on us now, not only our, our own hopes and dreams, not our own uh, significant others that have kind of come along this journey and really placed bets on us, making this thing a success. We've all, so many of us have sacrificed more than just Zach and I to, to make this thing work. And I, I, you know, it's, it could be scary sometimes if you think about it too much, but that pressure is something that I really, uh, I, I just, I gravitate towards it because it helps me focus. And, you know, there's no excuses at the end of the day, it's on me and Zach to make it work. And if there's a problem, there's no point in fingers. It's usually going to, unless it comes back at us. And so, uh, that's ultimately what I love about being a founder is it, we have to take care of everything. So we were working customer support in the early days, pretty much. And now, you know, thankfully we have a team to help us with that, but there's no job that we wouldn't do ourselves. And I think that's the true definition of a founder and a leader. I, yeah. Could have said any better. It, it's like we're the same size company in terms of employees. Yep. We'd say that we have the same exact hats. It really speaks to us. We nice. what you're saying, and it's like, you know, you got to balance 15 hats sometimes, but sometimes it's, you know, when you got to steer the ship, you got to steer it the right way with the right captain hat. I don't know. You say that you say another <laughs> saying like that. I don't know how it is, but it's pretty yeah. good. That was good. That's actually uh, pretty good. good so so to, to wrap a little bit up, I want to talk about one last thing, uh, and that is uh, quality video. 
to expand your brand awareness. Mm -hmm. We do video and photo for a living. That's what we, I mean, yep. constantly just filming and filming and filming, mm -hmm. but it's cool to see that you guys, you know, are really big believers in that. So how do you guys pair video with your podcast or how do you see other people do it? And specifically with Squadcast, how do you guys offer that to your, to your uh, clients, customers? Yeah, this wasn't intuitive to us. Like we were very focused on long form audio content recorded remotely. That is another way you could say it. And our customers just kept on asking us like, Hey, uh, I can see my guests like, uh, with video, uh, can I record that? You know, is that in the cards? Like, where do you stand on that? And, um, we really just kind of dug in from there to understand really the, the deep why here, why, why do people focused on audio content want video as part of their podcast? And we learned a lot. So, uh, Edison Research's infinite dial report, uh, really pulled a lot of audience and listeners, as to how they think about a podcast. And hmm. there's this kind of, they have the perspective of it being like a, a show, like with a capital S. And uh, the podcast is one element to the show. Uh, YouTube may be another element, Instagram another. And uh, really this kind of holistic universe uh, perspective. And if they have their eyeballs, they'll engage with video. If they only have their ears while they're commuting or walking their dog or doing dishes, like that's where the podcast comes in. And we all love the magic of that. So we really wanted to find the balance here of, okay, how do we provide, you know, the highest quality remote video recording? Like, is that even, uh, is that a, is that a solved problem already? Like, do we need to, uh, you know, wh what do we need to do that from like an engineering technology perspective? And that's really where um, we were able to, to find some magic there too. It turned out that um, talking to video uh, podcasters doing long form video as well that they weren't it was like a it was like almost a mirror of those very early conversations that we uh, had with the people uh, on the audio quality being recorded remotely it was kind of paper thin like they were using what was out there but they weren't at all really happy with the state of the art and that's really where we saw an opportunity to say okay let's take uh, you know our approach to recording audio and see if we can apply it to video to have that same emphasis on on quality so that's what we did, um, and we've been uh, we've been working on that for the last couple months. I'm really proud to uh, to say that we launched that at the the end of January here in 2021, and uh, already we're seeing amazing content recorded, like uh, like I think over a terabyte of video recorded in the first week, oh, wow. uh, just like a remarkable amount of video. Like um, in 2020, um, to share some more stats, we saw people record in over 130 countries. Um, and record over a decade of audio in one year. And that just really like blew our mind. Like that's right. crazy. Uh, so to have an opportunity to also uh, help podcasters really meet their audiences where they are and grow their show in like new and interesting ways, whether that be with like, you know, video commercials for your podcast episodes when they land, uh, whether that be, you know, audience and monetization opportunities on platforms like YouTube, in addition to the podcast that you own and distribute yourself. So uh, we're, we're really, really uh, stoked with what we're seeing people create uh, now. And uh, we're, we're working really hard to uh, define this new category of remote content production. Now that it's bigger than, than audio, we, we are really proud that we can also offer video to our customers. Uh, it was our most requested feature and uh, we couldn't get it out soon enough. So we're super stoked about that. Yeah, that's sweet. What I love about what, what I'm hearing you guys say is you guys really spend a lot of time and learning about the market. You do a lot of research. And I think that's something that our listeners can pick up on as well is sampling the market, seeing if it's actually a viable thing right. to execute on and then go out and do it. And you guys have preached that. So I really like that. Yeah, I'm really excited to use your guys' platform. Yeah, we are yeah, like absolutely. legit. Like I'm really excited. So like yep. with your guys' platform, we like our setup right now. Like we have a mm -hmm. Canon R5 that's filming us. We've got our our mics, our whole yep. mix board. All of that can plug into your guys' mm -hmm. platform, and it'll spit out the stuff we need. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we record the video locally. We record the audio locally, uh, and then we render in the cloud. Uh, so we have the focus on quality and reliability. So even in a worst case scenario because of our progressive upload is a uh, patent pending technology. You don't have to worry about ever losing uh, any content, even with recording remotely. We have automatic backups as well, in addition and separate from that. Um, and yeah, uh, any equipment uh, works awesome. So uh, I think uh, our advisor, Jordan Harbinger has a similar camera. I think his might be a Sony mirrorless, but yeah, DSLR, all good. Um, any audio equipment, any video equipment and, 
you're going to look and sound great um, with uh, with being anywhere in the world. That's very cool. You guys got fanboys and cheerleaders. We'll definitely yeah. promote it. Um, we'll yep. We do have listeners that we know have podcasts and that they'll be stoked on this. I can think yeah. of like three people right now that yeah. are. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge uh, photography uh, nerd as well and love all of that. So to to kind of blend these passions together uh, is is super oh. cool to me as well. Yeah. Another One more question real quick. Do you guys have um, anything coming in the, in the near future and you can say it or not, but with, with live podcasting and be able to like live stream? Go ahead, Zach. You sound like you were going to say something. <laughs> All good. Yeah. So, uh, so we're taking a similar approach here where we're, we're listening, you know, and seeing yep. kind of that's a, a core tenet and principle in our culture as a team is, is to, is to really listen and, and try to understand things deeply. Yep. Um, and we think we have some really interesting ideas that are kind of in the R and D phase right now where, um, we're doing a lot of interviews. We're doing a lot of, uh, kind of early product testing to see how we can help people, uh, engage with their audience in new ways. That's something that podcasting as an ecosystem is really lacking, uh, quite frankly. And podcasters are really hungry for that engagement with their audience. Um, I think, you know, uh, we're starting to see this like clubhouse, right? Like, uh, we're seeing a lot of headlines about that. Podcasters are, uh, very, uh, have a lot of practice and, you know, know how to engage with people over voice as a medium. So I think it, you know, that that's kind of one element there that we're seeing, but, um, but we have some stuff up, stuff up our sleeve that I think is going to be really rad in this direction to, uh, to really, um, pull your audience, like uh, so much of the quality, uh, first approach that we have on Squadcast is, is for our audience, quite frankly, right. like it, it right. is so that they can have a great experience consuming the content that we worked hard to create for them. Um, but to also like bring them into the conversation and into, uh, you know, the, the live experience there is super exciting to us. So I, I think there's a, there's a lot that we can do in, in that vein. And, uh, I think even the fact that you answer that question or ask that question, I think yeah, is, it's, is validating in some way that, uh, it's worth looking at. Very cool. Yeah, we're we're gonna integrate a live platform soon. But if there was something where it was just all in one, just yep. like phew, yep. that would be sweet. I mean, yeah. editing is a whole different thing. Wink, if, wink. You know, yeah. Right. <laughs> we hear you. I think bringing <laughs> editing into yeah. other softwares is a good yep. idea still. But just having it all there would be pretty. Well, we're stoked just to jump yep, on. Yeah, absolutely. So. We'll, well awesome. There. If you guys have any other messages you want to send to our listeners, feel free to let them know, and also let them know where they can find you, and if you guys have any offers or anything for those people. Yeah, absolutely. So the best place to find all things Squadcast, we have a ton of resources in our podcast, our blog, all at squadcast.fm, but we're also very active in all the major social channels. Uh, Clubhouse, we have a Clubhouse session every Thursday at 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. So what's that? Uh, 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern. So please yep. join us, pop in. We're talking all things remote nice. recording. It's not just podcast, uh, Squadcast focused. And uh, if, you, if you're looking to up your remote podcasting game, please feel free to sign up. Everyone gets a free seven day trial and you have a really passionate team behind it. So please let us know what you think and we'd love to talk to you. Awesome. Well, thanks guys for being on the podcast. That was super uh, yeah. insightful Amazing. for us yeah. personally and i'm sure our listeners will get a lot out of it mm -hmm. um like they said check out squadcast.fm follow us we're jumping on 100 percent. we're really oh, yeah. stoked on that so yeah. thanks guys for joining us on the podcast and uh, we look forward to hopefully having you guys on an episode maybe in a year or something to see where you guys are yep. at yep we'll do it on squadcast yeah, yeah. Be great. <laughs> <laughs> awesome thanks Alrighty, guys